Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One. Good vibrations at your service to talk about what happens on a mismatched feed line when you connect an antenna to your radio. This can be any kind of transmission line here. It can be open wire. It can be coaxial cable. It might even be an exotic type of line like a four-wire transmission line. I ought to describe that sometime in a video. It's, you don't see it very often, but it, it does exist. Even a waveguide. But in particular, I'm referring to coaxial cable or open wire window or ladder line because those are the most common in ham radio applications. So suppose that we have your, an antenna here that does not present a good impedance match to your transmitter. Now this can happen for a variety of reasons. There's only one way that you can have a one-to-one -one SWR that is a perfect match between your antenna and your transmission line. That is, if the antenna has a purely resistive impedance, that means no reactants. Generally, that means a resonant antenna, although not always. Pure resistance, no reactants. And that resistance must equal the characteristic impedance, or Z sub zero, of the transmission line. If both of those situations or both of those uh, requirements are not met. If either one of them is not met, you are going to have an SWR that's something other than one-to-one. -one. Let's just consider to make things rather simple that we have a 50 ohm coaxial transmission line and we have an antenna that does present a purely resistive impedance, but it is not equal to the characteristic impedance of the line. It might be higher, it might be lower, but it's not equal to the characteristic impedance of the line. In a case like that, you're going to get an uneven distribution of voltage and current along the line. If you have a perfect match, one to one standing wave ratio, then the ratio of the voltage to the current on your transmission line is going to equal Z sub naught or 50 ohms everywhere along the line. So you might have 50 volts and 1 amp. Uh, you might have 500 volts and 10 amps. Uh, but in any case that ratio is always going to be 50 to 1. Now if you, in, suppose now, let's just uh, hypothetically say that your antenna has a, a, uh, an impedance of, oh my, 300 ohms. That's about what happens with a folded dipole antenna. You'll get an, an impedance somewhere on the order of 300 ohms. Uh, it'll be a pure uh, resistance but it will be a 300 ohm resistance so you're going to have a 300 divided by 50 standing wave ratio your SWR isn't gonna be one to one it's going to be 300 divided by 50 equals 6 to 1 well in a case like that your voltage and your current are not going to be uniformly distributed along the line. You are going to have places along the line where you get maximum voltage. That will occur at any half wavelength multiple along the line from the antenna. So if this is a half a wavelength right there, another half a wavelength, another half a wavelength, then your voltage 
is going to be maximum here, 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 and it kind of looks like you're going to get that situation at your transmitter as well. Your voltage is going to be minimum at midway points between those other points, or odd whole number multiples of a quarter of a wavelength away from the antenna. So you're going to have a distribution that looks something like this in terms of voltage intensity versus position along the line. Now we're not talking about uh, we're just we're simply talking about say the uh, RMS RF voltage along the line. We're not talking about instantaneous voltages which fluctuate back and forth. We're talking about root mean square or effective voltages. So that's what the voltage distribution is going to look like. These minima are called voltage nodes. The maxima are called voltage loops or voltage peaks. The loop you might think of as this curved zone right here. Now we can actually calculate what that voltage will be. It will be much higher than what we would get on a one-to-one -one standing wave ratio line. And if it's high enough, if the mismatch is severe enough, we might actually see arcing between the line conductors because of that extreme voltage. Those That can occur at voltage peaks. Now, if we want to look at the current distribution instead, the current is going to be minimum where the voltage is maximum, and maximum where the voltage is minimum. So you're going to see current nodes or minima at intervals of one half wavelength just like where the voltage peaks are. So the, the current distribution is going to look something like that. At your radio, in a situation like this, it looks like we're one half, one, two wavelengths long line. We're going to see pretty close to a th if well, if the and if the feed line is exactly two wavelengths. Let's just suppose that it is two wavelengths exactly from end to end on this transmission line. Then you're going to see 300 ohms pure resistance at this point here, where the radio is, right there you're going to see 300 ohms pure resistance. If on the other hand uh, you were to locate the radio at a voltage node or a current loop you would see a, a, a much much lower but purely resistive impedance. Uh, if the standing wave ratio gets high enough on a transmission line that you're running a lot of power into the current at these current loops can get so large that it overheats the conductors in the transmission line and may result in melting of the dielectric between the conductors as the voltage extremes might cause arcing across that dielectric. You don't want to have an extreme standing wave ratio if you run high power into a narrow gauge transmission line like say RG58. You're asking for trouble if you do that. So this is basically the way that this distribution occurs. The current nodes occur at half wavelength multiples from the antenna. And remember you have to take the velocity factor of the transmission line into account. So if, for example, the velocity factor equals 66%, as it would in a solid dielectric coaxial cable, then if you operate on the 30 meter band, you're actually going to see electrical wavelengths at 20 meters, roughly, two-thirds of 30 meters along this line. So these, wa these half wavelength points are going to be at 10 meter intervals apart or about 33 feet there somewhere along in there. So you just have to keep in mind uh, the length of your transmission line is going to affect what your transmitter sees. At any length 
that is not a whole number multiple of one quarter wavelength from this purely resistive antenna, you will have reactance as well as resistance at your transmitter. But generally speaking, a good antenna tuner or transmatch right here at this point can make your transmitter happy. Although ideally, you would want to place the transmatch at the antenna feed point and get a one-to-one -one SWR all along the whole length of your line. That'll get rid of the risk of this power-induced uh, voltage and current extreme conundrum, and it will also reduce the loss that the SWR causes in your transmission line, which sometimes can be significant. Not always, but sometimes it can be. In general, a good rule of thumb is that if you have an SWR that's less than 2 to 1 on a transmission line of any kind in any length, you will not experience standing wave ratio losses that are significant enough to affect the signal strength that the person on the other end is going to hear. You're going to have less than 1 dB of SWR loss as long as you can keep your standing wave ratio below 2 to 1. If you get it up to 6 to 1, though, that could cause some trouble for you. Maybe a dB or 2, maybe 3 in the extreme. Stan Gibalisco signing off. Ham Radio Operator W1GV saying 73 and so long for now.